Who? Let's finish this up with question six, the longest problem on the test. Systolic blood pressure is the amount of pressure that blood exerts on blood vessels while the heart is beating. The mean systolic blood pressure for people in the United States is reported to be 122 millimeters of mercury with a standard deviation of 15 millimeters of mercury. The wellness department of a large corporation is investigating whether the mean systolic blood pressure of its employees is greater than the reported national mean. A random sample of 100 employees will be selected, the systolic blood pressure of each employee in the sample will be measured, and the sample mean will be calculated. Let mu represent the mean systolic blood pressure of all employees at the corporation. Consider the following hypothesis. Null hypothesis is of course that population mean is equal to 122, and the alternative hypothesis is that it's greater than 122, greater than the reported mean of 122. Part A. Describe a type 2 error in the context of the hypothesis test. Well, what is type 2 error? Type 2 error is the error of failing to reject, failing to reject the null hypothesis, failing to reject the null hypothesis, when alternative hypothesis is true. So even though alternative hypothesis is true, you're saying, uh, I'm not sure if H0 is wrong, so I'll, I may just go with it. So that's the error. And in this case, it is failing to, in the context, it is failing to reject the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis, that mean systolic blood pressure, that mean systolic blood pressure, systolic blood pressure of all employees, of all employees at the corporation, all employees at the corporations, at the corporation, is 122 milligrams of mercury, millimeters of mercury, I meant to say, when the actual mean is greater than 122. When the actual mean is greater than, is greater than 122 millimeters of mercury. So that's the answer to part A. So let's go on to part B. Assume that Sigma, the standard deviation of the st systolic blood pressure of all employees at the corporation is 15. If mu is equal to 122, the sampling distribution of sample means for samples of size 100 is approximately normal with a mean of 122 millimeters of mercury and a standard deviation of 1.5 millimeters of mercury. What values of the sample mean would represent sufficient evidence to reject? the null hypothesis at the significance level of alpha equals to 0.05. So we want to find which values of x, which values of sample mean, I meant to say, is going to represent sufficient evidence to reject. And for us to reject, since alpha is 0.05, and we're testing whether mu is greater than 122, it's a right-tailed test, we're going to reject when the values fall into this area, this area to the right, with the area of 0.05. So we're going to reject if the sample mean is greater than this value, this value at 0.05. So we want to find this value. We know, we know the mean is 122, and standard deviation of the sample means, we're looking at sample means, is 1.5. 1.5. There are many ways of doing this. If you're using a table, you can go back and forth between z-score and the actual value. But really, it's much easier if you have TI-84 or TI-83. You can use the inv norm, inverse normal, which goes from probability to the value, which is what we want to do, with the area of 0.95, because you want to plug in the area to the left. So 0.95 and the mean of 122, and the standard deviation of 1.5. And of course, we're looking at distribution of sample means. And when you evaluate this, you should get the value, you should get the value of 124.467. So we're going to reject 
when the value when the value of the sample mean is greater than 124.467 so reject when the sample mean is greater than 124.467 on to part c the actual mean systolic blood pressure of all employees at the corporation is 125, not the hypothesized value of 122, and the standard deviation is 15. So the null hypothesis was wrong. It was not 122, it was 125, so alternative hypothesis was right. So in this case, we want to reject H0. We want to reject H0 when it's wrong. So we want to we want to, using the actual mean of 125 and the results from part B, determine the probability that the null hypothesis will be rejected and that's what we want to do. If we do not reject the null hypothesis when alternative hypothesis is correct, we're going to commit type 2 error. We don't want to do that. So we want to find the probability of rejection. So let's start by drawing out the normal distribution. And in this case, we have mean of 125, that's the actual mean, and the standard deviation of what? 15 divided by square root of the sample size, and sample size is 100, I believe, yes, square root of 100, which is 10, so we should have, we should have a standard deviation of sample means being 1.5, so we have a mean of 125, standard deviation of 1.5, and we know we are going to reject when the sample mean is greater than 124.467. So we are going to reject when we have a value greater than 124.467. So that's the area we want to find. And you can use the normal CDF if you have your calculator, or you can look it up on the table either way. And you want to use cumulative distribution to add up the entire area. From 124.467 all the way to infinity, or you can just put 10 to the 99, that's as close as we're going to go, to, and the mean of 125 and the standard deviation of 1.5. And when you plug it in, you should get the probability of 0 0.639. So that's the answer to part C. And part D, what statistical term is used for the probability found in part C? Well, we found the probability of rejecting H0 when H1 is true. When the actual mean was greater than 122, we found the probability of rejection. And the definition of this is power. Power. And you want the power to be large. Because when H1 is true, when H0 is messed up, you want to reject H0. So you want the power to be as large as possible. So the answer to D is power. And on to part E. Suppose the size of the sample of employees to be selected is greater than 100. For this one, we used the sample size of 100. 100. But now we are increasing the sample size. Would the probability of rejecting null hypothesis be greater than, less than, or equal to the probability calculated in part C? So it's asking us, is power, is power going to increase, going to increase, decrease, or stay the same? Stay the same when sample size, when sample size increases, when sample size increases. And it makes intuitive sense that power should increase because as sample size gets larger, you should have more accuracy. But let's actually explain it more in depth. As the sample size increases, as the sample size increases, the standard deviation of the sample mean, which is standard deviation of the population over square root of n, decreases. Because as bottom gets larger, as n gets larger, so bottom gets larger, the entire fraction is going to decrease, which means, which means, the sample means, the sample means, will have the greater tendency, have the greater tendency to target, to target the actual value of the mean, target the actual value of the mean. Target the actual value of the mean. 
which is 125. So target the actual value of the mean of 125. So there is going to be a higher chance. Therefore, there is a higher probability. There will be a higher probability. Probability of rejecting H naught of mu of 122. Because as sample size gets large, you're going to target 125 more than 122. And if you're getting value not as close to 122, there is going to be a higher probability of rejecting H naught, which means power is going to increase as sample size gets larger. So that's the answer to part E. And we are done with the entire 2018 AP statistics free response.